Hello Jubians, welcome back to another Dot Spice Attain YouTube video and today um well it's a TARDIS video and I'm gonna start off with exterior. Alexa, interior on. Thank you. So this is the stuff I kept mentioning about uh previous videos, I think. Um this is the stuff that Josh used on his console. Um I went to be in um Bought a few things in Doctor Who sets to review, and it's actually a multi purpose liner. Um, you get this from BM, so it's like th uh, £2.99, so three quid. Um, you get quite a lot of stuff, a lot of this stuff. And the other day, um, you can tell that the, the plastic on the poly pocket ripped and it went through to the other side, but yet the paper, there's not even made a a uh, little hole, but yeah, it's punctured both sides, that's weird. Um, lately, my TARDIS has been a little bit stupid, um, but these will be going on the windows to replace this. this. Um, so the time rotor is currently non-functional, because my motor decided to be an absolute pain in the ass and burnt out. Um, where is it? There it is, this thing here. Which is a modified uh, brushless motor, and it's not even doing a thing. But yeah, if you look, oh yeah, I've disconnected the lantern as well. Speaking of which, I did replace the lantern with uh, using the LED from inside one of these things as the lantern, and it's a lot brighter. But the lantern will be put on a separate power source, so this will be the switch uh, for the lantern. Um, so yeah. So I haven't really had much progress done of the uh, the New Year's um, yet, but I will be um, rectifying this motor problem, um, which means I've got to disassemble this. Um, I've got to find something to donate as a new motor, which I have an idea of what I can use, so that'll be in the next video. Um, so in the next video you'll see me attempt to repair the TARDIS um, mechanism. The unit that controls the up and down motion is still in there. I've just I've disconnected it from the side. Um, I did have a spare motor on the side for this, but I've lost it and I don't know where it's gone. So I was digging around my room yesterday and I did find a bigger motor, but it's too big for the casing. But then I had a, a brain fart and thought, thinking I can use something that I already have inside of a product to make the function work so it's not all lost but I'm hoping it will work a lot better but this time when I do fix the time rotor mechanism uh, it's going to be left uh, with this instead of it being the light hooked up as well the light will have to be disconnected from this bit and it'll be put onto a, a USB power and this will be the switch to um, turn off and off the um, the lantern that's outside on top of the box um, in fact I will show you if I get a stool so you can tell it has it has got something else in there it's actually got the old um, you know the switch that I have on the console there, that switch um, on one of the ribs where the, um, in front of the screen, well, my old one of them is currently in there, with the, the ring light on top, um, so it is a lot brighter. Um, but unfortunately I've had to disconnect it from there, that's where it would be connected up. I did uh, go to be to be and to buy some more stuff for the TARDIS and my custom TARDIS, which yes it has been taken down, more than that in, in a later video. Um, so yeah, we have brackets, uh, mainly to help strengthen the box and the new console, the custom one, which I'm planning on. Ignore that. Oh yeah, I got some new converse. <laughs> um, yes, where are they? 
I have it in here, I know I do. That's the pit, because my room's going to get a bit of a redesign. So, I went to B&M and I bought some block connectors, so I'm not having to pinch my dad's all the time. Um, in fact, my dad's got one of them special ones, them quick release ones, which is ones I've seen out and about, and I don't think I could buy them, but... I've also got some more screws, again, because I keep half pinching my dad's. Um, so this will help with the process of building the new console. And adding bits and brackets, because not only that, these brackets will also... Not that. <laughs> these brackets will also, especially these smaller ones, um, in time, it's going to be something for the base section to be um, supported on so it's not going to wobble so it'll have a mounted section um, so that's good the top is obviously freestanding but obviously it's got a pipe going across um, there and I have something special while we're talking about TARDISes and this will be for the next video that I want to do um, which is going to kick the new year videos off but put it this way if I cover it it's from that company there, and it's something that's related to this TARDIS. Well, related to the TARDIS I'm building it off, um, which is something to be excited for. And not everyone can, can say they have that, so yeah, that's where the lantern is. It's all box, and I've uh, disconnected that. I've just looped that back onto the motor because. I thought it would help, but even when I do take it down... Oh, you son of a bitch! Well, looks like I don't have to tear this thing apart after all, thank hell, because um, that would have been an absolute pain in the ass to sort out. Um, so it does look like I do actually need to rewire the... Um, I've got to rewire that instead. So the motor's fine. I think what I've accidentally done is thinking, oh, well, it was connected to the motor, meaning it was going to activate the motor. The motor's, the motor's fine. It's just you don't like sharing power with the lantern because it slows it down, so it's going to have to have a fast camera to move. And so I'll just link this back up. But first things first, I've got to disconnect that from in there and that in there. So then I can have it linked up to um, that again and a power source, which is something I'll have to work on at some point. Okay, sorry for all these weird ass jump cuts, but um, I've disconnected this side. I've just got to do the same with this side, which I should be able to just undo the tape. Um, to be honest, I should have put wall connector on these, um, which I think I'm going to have uh, to. Look in my drawer because I know in my drawer I've got another block connector that I don't have to uh, open the full packet just for a single block connector, like that side. So I'm delighting it's thrown you guys off. Um, it's thrown me off because my screen's a little bit dark right at the minute because I've got to brighten it back up. Um, try to do this single handedly as well, it's kind of difficult. But just give me a sec. Okay, so. This is completely disconnected, which I'm going to have to dangle in. Um, and now I'm going to hook that back onto the time rail and hopefully it will start spinning <laughs> properly. Um, and it means I don't have to replace the actual mechanism and destroy something else to get a new motor assembly put in this thing. I do have a thicker motor, but that's for the custom Mark 10 TARDIS, because I've still got a wake away of make a, uh, a thing mechanism for that. But yeah. Okay, so jump cut. This this section of the video has been made a few days later after the previous bit of the video. Uh, so since the first bit, I've fixed the lantern, and the uh, the mechanism for the time rotor is fully functional. Turns out I didn't have to replace the motor. Um, they had what was going on is while the lantern was hooked up to the same 
power source is the motor to run the tan rotor it was struggling to run after a while so what i've done is i've um i've just put a usb lead onto it and i'm just using the iphone charging thing for it um in time i will uh, reduce the amount of extension these i've used um because i've got a usb plug i'm probably going to replace these charges with um because then it allows me to be able to you know use less um of the mains as much as possible in a, in a way um i noticed me at some of the leds on the on the walls of Go, I started to go out. Uh, this one, <laughs> it's it's burnt out. There's one down here somewhere. It's going out down there. You can see it. Uh, I've got a tape. I keep tripping over this wire um, for the original LEDs, which was going for the um, my original custom console, which I've taken down. Because uh, I want to rebuild it for a, a new console, my own version of the console. Um, also, you'll be pleased to know, uh, thanks to the Bio Doctor, I've got some new some <laughs> Jody sitting on the console. Um, <laughs> I've got some new screen accurate TARDIS parts coming. Um, I'm not going to say what they are. Um, it's going to be a surprise for the video. Um, but it wouldn't have been possible without BioDoctor um, helping me out with that. So thank you so much um, for that, Aaron. I really appreciate that. Put it this way, I'll be happy to say I don't need to work on this. I hope. Because <laughs> this is supposed to be the sextant. Uh, but obviously the monitor's a bit too low um, for it to slide all the way under. So I'm hoping, yes... One of the new parts is the sextant. That's the only thing you're going to know. Um, so th that will be going there. Hopefully if it fits, I'm kind of dreading that when it comes. Um, just got the parts ordered. I'm going to work on this so it looks like the actual thing on the console. Like this, it's totally wrong. It's not Perspex. It's actually um, like... It, it's hard to explain, but I will try and work on that at a future time. Um, yesterday, um, I shifted a couple of bits, uh, around the TARDIS, uh, so, yeah. These are from, actually, I got these and I thought they'd look cool. They're actually from, like, the, uh, the Starbucks coffees you can get. I saved a couple of lids because they just look very TARDIS-like. It's not staying on this TARDIS, it's probably going to go on my custom one when I've decided to start building it, but... For now, it just sits nicely in my wheel space, and I've got another one there inside this cog piece, which I'm gonna probably stick down. Um, and I've got this bit here, which was from the inner workings of one of them tap lights that I've uh, stripped down for the lantern up there in the on the police box. If I put this inside here. With it being gold, it would look like the actual clutch pip, the, the clutch plate piece thing that, um, that's supposed to be off a Formula, Formula One car or something like that. I don't know. I'll just put that there. Uh, so now the time rotor is working fine and it looks like, oh no, <laughs> that LED's burnt out. Uh, well, it gives us less warning, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I've got new parts coming. Um, I'm going to work on the uh, rims a little bit because it's starting to peel upwards. Especially on mainly this one, it's starting to peel upwards and I'm going to find a way to stick it down. But they're still, still robust. Like, bearing in mind it is basically a uh, flexible uh, material around the circumference of the table um, which you can probably see uh, inside inside there there you go you can see the hot glue 
and had to cut little slits to make it angulated so it would curve up and have this top piece going around. That was a, a difficult thing to achieve. Uh, the one on Biodopsis console was actually braced, um, but obviously I knew I knew how to do it because he taught me the way to do it. And then I kind of figured out, well, I'll just try and do it my way first, and if not, then I've got another plan to fall back onto. Uh, but I didn't have to, thank heavens. But yeah, uh, this switch here, I was going to have it as the switch to power on the lantern, but it means having more wiring trailing underneath the console and stuff, and I don't want that. Because the whole idea of this console, it's built in a way where it can all be flat packed. Uh, so it can all be flat packed, moved and reassembled easily. Like, boy, it is bloody heavy because when I moved it before into this room, it was heavy to, I had to get another person to help me carry it into, into the room and put it this way. It, it, it's a deadlift, put it this way, it's a deadlift. Um, but yeah, still got to work on this. Um, still got to work on these. That. That's come loose over time. I've got to put some brown tape or something over this. Well, paint it brown. Um, I've got to put something over this. Um, and I've accidentally glued it there and I shouldn't have done. Because now I've got to peel that off just to be able to take it away from the console. Because it is... The, these parts are made to come off. Um, some of these parts can stay on if I move the console, but most of the parts will have to come off to access to take the uh, the ribs off, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Um, that's been behaving itself since I've fixed it. It's got a washer in there and a longer bolt, and it's got the teeth cut and well, using a pair of pliers, and it's it's got that squeak, uh, which... Gives it the authenticity of the, the TARDIS, which I quite like. And this is um, supposed to be the binoculars on the <laughs> the TARDIS. This was originally on my custom TARDIS, but I won't be having it on my custom. This is what I had since I was a child. And they're pretty beaten up. It still somewhat works. It's just missing a couple of bits. It's pretty fragile, but I'm going to paint it up and have it on the console like it is now. Um, I'm going to have brackets screwed into this bit um, so it anchors it down to the console so it doesn't have to be worried about moved so it doesn't have to be moved in different places it can go to where it belongs